I've taken the time to study the all 22 coaches film from the Buffalo Bills week 15 win over the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm sharing my top takeaways today on Locked on Bills. You are locked on Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Well, folks, you know what time it is. Time for the All Twenty Two Review episode. I've studied this coach's film, and I have some things to share with you. I want to talk about the offensive run game. The passing game, we'll do snap counts, some takeaways on the defensive side of the football, studs and duds, you know, the things that we do here on the All-22 Review. Now, I'm recording this a little bit later than usual, so I've had the opportunity to listen to Sean McDermott's Monday press conference, and there was some injury updates that I felt I should at least start with and acknowledge them really quickly here, Uh, one of them being Jordan Phillips. Jordan Phillips had wrist surgery Sunday night. So like after the game, he had wrist surgery. He's expected to miss some time. I don't know how much time, what the extent of the injury is, but he's expected to miss time. And so I'm I'm thinking this is going to be a big opportunity here for Puna Ford to play, right? And I know that we've all, I don't know if I want to speak for everyone, but a lot of us, including me, have wanted to see Puna Ford get some more opportunities with this defense. And that should happen now that Jordan Phillips is going to miss some time. Uh, Sean McDermott commented on A.J. Epinesa and Micah Hyde. He said they are improving, and then we don't have anything yet on Ty Johnson and that shoulder injury. Uh, Ty Johnson finished the game, but you know it certainly felt like he was bothered with a stinger or something in the shoulder. So that's the injury stuff that we'll be monitoring throughout the course of this week. Again, a short week. Uh, sh- quick turnaround Saturday game in Los Angeles for the Bills in week 16. But let's first close the book on week 15 and talk about this decisive dominant win that the Bills had over the Dallas Cowboys. And we know the story of the game is the run game, the Bills rushing offense. And so I want to talk about some of the dynamics with that that made it so successful. And Look, there's been a lot of commentary out there this week about, well, where was this run game been all year? It's look, it, maybe it's not been this productive, right? Like they haven't had 266 rushing yards in a game, but they've been on a heater running the football. And for the most part this season, they've ran the ball pretty successfully. Now, this was obviously the the big, you know, explosive day, but it hasn't been like out of nowhere, right? It has not been out of nowhere. Uh, big day, like I mentioned, 266 rushing yards, the most given up by Dallas all year. And so the question that I wanted to answer as I watched the film was, well, why? Why were the Bills able to be this successful running the football? What were the themes? Was there any differences in the scheme or the execution in this particular game compared to what we've talked about throughout the course of the year? And if I were able to find some things that were a little bit different to me, I would say, first of all, the personnel groupings and the variety within that. You saw Joe Brady dial up runs from 22 personnel, so two backs, two tight ends, 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends, 11 personnel. Like They ran the ball out of all of those formations, and within that, they really – mixed and matched their personnel. When it was 12 personnel, that didn't just mean it was Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox. Sometimes it was Quentin Morris. Sometimes David Edwards was playing big tight end. Sometimes Ty Johnson 
was playing tight end. And that's actually one of the big wrinkles that I noticed. There were five snaps offensively where Ty Johnson played in line tight end. I kid you not. And I'm pretty sure on almost all of those plays, he was a play side blocker and he did well. And I, it's almost like Dallas didn't consider him as a option because it felt like they were surprised whenever he was rolling into contact and creating lanes for James Cook and the other ball carriers. So like Ty Johnson was playing play side tight end. You had Quentin Morris doing the same thing, right? I mean, Knox and Kincaid still played the most of the snaps at tight end, but you saw them sprinkling in some different players. Even David Edwards had a decent amount of opportunity as a tight end in this game. So I think the personnel variety and how they mixed and matched personnel within that was something that stood out to me. As far as the run plays, I mean, these were the core run concepts they've run all year long. Dart, which is that tackle wrap play, duo, some zone. I, I mean, it was pretty much what they do. Now, they dressed some of it up a little bit differently, so it was out of some different formations and, as I mentioned, some different personnel groupings, but it was the stuff that they do. And within that, I thought if there was one big difference, I thought you saw the Bills go from running that tackle wrap dart play where the offensive tackle pulls from the backside and becomes a play side blocker. They, they've typically run that. I wouldn't say every time, but a high, high percentage of times with Deion Dawkins as the polar. Well, they gave Spencer Brown some opportunities to be the polar. They ran it to the left a fair amount of times against Dallas. And he was very successful. And I think that's critical. Like, if you can run that dart tackle wrap play both to the left and right, and you trust both Deion Dawkins and Spencer Brown to be able to get out in space and hit those blocks play side and longer poles coming from the backside, it's going to make it even more dangerous. It's been a dangerous play for the Bills all season long. It probably peaked against Dallas. And I think being able to do it both directions matters. I know that feels like maybe a small thing but it is a huge tendency breaker and something that I think they can build off, you know, moving forward. If you guys remember, whenever Joe Brady was named interim offensive coordinator, I had Keith Sanchez on the podcast. And Keith Sanchez worked with Joe Brady, he was part of that staff with LSU in 2019. So he had a, you know, front row seat to Joe Brady in that historic offense. And I asked Keith about. Joe Brady and some of the things that we can expect from him. And one of the key things that Keith said was Joe Brady's priorities whenever he's building a game plan is he asks himself, where's Waldo? And what that means is you find the slug out there, you find the weak link, you find the guy that you want to attack and you attack them. You go after their worst player. And it became very clear studying this tape that they believed Dallas's worst player or the one they wanted to attack was 14. Marquis Bell, second year undrafted safety out of Florida A&M that converted to linebacker. He's 210 pounds. And the Bills threw big bodies at him all day long. And he was physically outmatched all day long. And I've watched a lot of Dallas this year and I've I've mostly been impressed with Marquis Bell. But the times that I was impressed with him was him really just using athleticism, using his range, being able to make tackles in space, playing in coverage, that type of stuff. But the Bills made him be a true box defender and said, you're going to eat blocks from offensive linemen all day long, and we're going to see what you're made of. And they went after him time and time and time again. 210-pound linebackers taking on Deion Dawkins and Osiris Torrance, and tight ends in space over and over and over again, and they really, really took advantage of that opportunity. So that was the Where's Waldo. Very clear to me that Waldo in this game for the Bills was 14, Marcus Bell. 
But at the end of the day, it just came down to execution, offensive line execution. The blocking was outstanding. The running backs were terrific. Great vision, great patience by both James Cook and Ty Johnson, kind of the primary ball carriers in this game. And they won after contact. This has been a gripe of mine this year as I've talked about the Bills' rushing offense, and you can go back and listen to our quarterly report cards. I I think every time I've said these running backs are not winning after contact, Well, they won after contact against Dallas. James Cook, 3.52 yards on average after contact per carry. Josh Allen, who had a few carries this game, 3.38 average yards post-contact. Latavius Murray, three yards. Ty Johnson, 3.56. So all of your ball carriers are over three yards after contact per carry on average. And so that complemented your blocking effort with those guys getting additional yards for themselves, that wasn't blocked. That was phenomenal. Uh, Once again, James Cook, vision in the hole, being able to have the patience and the vision to get into places where he can be in a hole, and then from there, knowing what to do. And you saw that time and time again where he's able to get out of some congested areas, run to daylight, and get some explosive runs. And at the end of the day, exceptional execution, physicality from all 11 players on the field. It was a joy to go back and watch this Buffalo Bills offense, particularly when it comes to the run game. All right, now I have some I have some issues with the passing game. I do. And I'm going to talk about that here in just a moment, so stick with me. But folks, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. That's Okay, because game time is here. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events New Year. They have killer deals on last-minute tickets. They have all-in prices, views from your seat, and a best price guarantee. I mean, simply put, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. The app is incredible. They have flash deals. I love just kind of logging into game time from time to time just to see what flash deals are presented to me for some of the events that are near me. And they also do this really cool thing where if you buy a ticket, you don't have to dig through emails to get the ticket. They send it straight to your phone. So snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on NFL for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, folks, let's talk about this passing game, the Buffalo Bills passing offense. Obviously, it wasn't a big part of the script, right? Bills ran the ball. They played great defense. Was Josh Allen 7 of 15 throwing the ball? Uh, Not a ton of yards, right? Under 100 yards passing. And, And I think that's okay. That's what this game called for. But when you study the tape, I remain concerned by the execution of the passing game. And I'm not going to sit here and and overstate this, right? Please don't take it the wrong way. There's been plenty of good when it comes to Joe Brady, Josh Allen, this passing offense. But there's been some blunders. And I've talked about them every week on this All-22 review. And I've got more to say this time around, which is discouraging, right? I want to see this progressing in a good direction, and I'm not sure that it is. Like I said, it had its moments. The James Cook touchdown pass was awesome. The James Cook Should have been touchdown pass was great scheme, great execution, except for not catching the ball. The two throws to Stephon Diggs down the field. Josh Allen rolling to his right, Diggs making the one-handed catch. And then earlier in the game, uh, there was a really, really good play-action call where there was kind of a, I would call it deeper mesh. There was a rub. Diggs was able to get break free and was wide open, and they connected. So there were some good things in this game. But I'm left thinking a whole lot more about the missed opportunities in the passing game. Some of them are very obvious. Dalton Kincaid had two drops in this game. I talked about it, the second and three play. uh, Josh Allen throws a deep ball to Gabe Davis, who has good vertical separation on the play, and then he just couldn't find it. I mean, his eyes are up in the air for he's running at least 10 yards looking for the ball, and it winds up landing at his feet in doesn't even make a play on it. doesn't come back, work for the ball. Stephon Diggs had a chance to convert on the next play, the third and three, and he couldn't finish the, the, the catch. Talked about it. James Cook had the drop. 
should have been another touchdown. Those were the obvious ones, but the ones that weren't as obvious as you study the tape, you see one of Josh Allen's incompletions. I just went through five of his incompletions. There was eight of them. One of them is a, a situation where Gabe Davis and Khalil Shakir run the same route. They literally run the exact same route. And now there's some protection issues on the play, but like this is the stuff people would post on Twitter and say, Ken Dorsey's the dumbest offensive coordinator of all time. You got players running the same route. Well, it's, there it was again. You have another situation where Josh Allen is working his eyes to a deep post to Gabe Davis that's open. It's open. He doesn't pull the trigger. And then he's, he works his eyes back down to Stefan Diggs, who's wide open in the middle of the field as a check down. And he doesn't throw it to either person, and he eats the ball and takes a sack. And I understand, like, you're up in the game. You want you don't want to put the ball in harm's way. I can respect that. But we're talking about wide open on a post route, and you watched it the whole time. Throw it. Yet another situation early in the game. It was on that actual little flare pass to Stephon Diggs. Josh's eyes started down the field to a wide open James Cook on a corner route. I mean, wide open. And he goes to James Cook and then comes back down to throw it to Stefan Diggs where there's two guys over top of him waiting to tackle him. Like, why did you turn down that throw to James Cook? And if you're part of our subtext community, that means you're in our Discord. And I put all this stuff in our film clips channel. So those people have, have seen these plays. I'm not making this up. So you just had, you had some problems here. You had some problems here. Like, and, and we've seen problems in the passing game, miscommunications, drop passes. I mean, drops have got to be fixed over the last five games. The Bills passing attempts result in a drop 14.5% of the time. That's way too high. That's crazy high. That needs to be cut in half or better. That's number one in the league over the last five games. Josh Allen's drop rate on throws is 14.5% by far leading the NFL. This has got to get tightened up. This has to be more precise. And I think the Bills are fortunate in this game that they were able to lean on this rushing offense and they played great defense because I, I would be very concerned if this had to be a drop back passing game that there wouldn't have been some problems. And, and not only did you have issues with, I think, some decision making from Josh Allen, obviously not finishing plays when it comes to the, the receivers. But you had protection issues in this game, too. Like, the pass protection was not good. Josh Allen was pressured on 11 of 19 dropbacks. That's, that's crazy high. And I thought Josh Allen handled a lot of the quick pressure really well, and I think he knew where, where Micah Parsons was, and you know he would kind of work away from him when he saw Parsons shoot a gap he would put himself in position to help that blocker to have you know some some leverage advantages and Josh could work outside and make it tough on Parsons like i thought a lot of that was good but there was pressure continuously so for as good as the run game was and you had some fun passing plays like this passing offense was far from precise in this game and again the volume wasn't there the volume wasn't necessary but some of those things that we've seen in smaller doses in these other games showed up a lot in this game. It just didn't cost the Bills. And so this is definitely something I'm dialed into. I want to see cleaner, more precise execution in the passing game from the protection, Josh Allen and his decision-making, and these, these weapons finishing and making plays when they have an opportunity to make a play. Because the consistency was not there in this game, and some of that hasn't been there for the last four or five games, and that's got to get tightened up. So I'm not trying to like toss a wet blanket over this very exciting 31-10 to 10 win, but I got to be honest with you with what I'm seeing, and this is not a very clean passing operation right now, and that's got to change. Offensive snap counts. The Bills had 67 offensive snaps in this game. And, of course, the starters came out later on, so we got a ton of different players here. Josh Allen, 60 snaps. Kyle Allen, 7 at quarterback. At running back, James Cook, 37 of 67 snaps. Ty Johnson, 20. Latavius Murray, 14. Reggie Gilliam, 14. 
At tight end, this is kind of interesting here. Dawson Knox, 41 of 67. Dalton Kincaid, 33 of 67. Quentin Morris, 18. David Edwards, 7. And then actually, like I said, Ty Johnson played five snaps of tight end. So they definitely were creative there. And I wonder how much of, of this is Dalton Kincaid. We know he had a, a thumb injury and a shoulder injury. Um, but also just that it became this rush heavy game, right? They ran the ball like 49 times. Um, and so I think that maybe dictated some of Kincaid's lack of snaps, if you will. And then he, he dropped the tooth balls that were thrown to him. So something to be mindful of there. Wide receiver. These are interesting snap counts as well. Gabe Davis, 48 of 67 snaps. Trent Shurfield, 38. Khalil Shakir, 32. Steph Diggs, 31. Deontay Hardy. And I think maybe apply some of what I said about Stefan Diggs there. And you, this winds up being a rush heavy game. And you, you're not necessarily wanting to put Stefan Diggs out there to block more than he is going out and running routes. Offensive line, uh, Osiris Torrance and Spencer Brown played all 67 snaps. Then Connor McGovern, Deion Dawkins, Mitch Morse played 60. And then when those guys came out, Torrance and Brown stayed on. And then for the last seven plays, it was Torrance Brown and then David Edwards, Ryan Vandemark at tackle. Ryan Bates at center. So those are your offensive snap counts and really my big takeaways overall as it goes for the offensive side of the football. Stick with me. We're going to talk defense. We're going to get to studs and duds here as well. But folks, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to be certain that you have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. And they even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions making the process even easier and quicker. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. All right, folks, let's talk a little bit about this defense here. Great day for the Bills defense, right? Held them to 10 points. Uh, not many yards. I think they had like, like 95 yards or something uh, going into the third quarter, maybe even less. I mean, the Bills defense was phenomenal in this game. So we ask ourselves the question, why was it phenomenal? And I really think that this was a game that the back seven on defense was the story. So your, your linebackers, your safeties, your corners. I thought those guys were terrific, super sound and cohesive in coverage. I thought the communication was at an extremely high level. Uh, Terrell Bernard in particular, making sure that guys were lined up, making smart adjustments on the fly. You can see a lot of communication happening. And I think the Bills anticipated a lot of what Dallas was going to do. Uh, I felt like there was nothing that Dallas did that confused them in any way, shape, or form. I thought they were trusting their technique, trusting the leverage of the scheme, some man coverage opportunities where guys were just sticky in coverage. There just wasn't a lot of space for Dak to throw the football. And I think that's a testament to the back seven. I thought those guys were phenomenal. And I think the number here, I like to kind of give a number and tell the story behind the number. I think the number here is Dak Prescott. His average time to throw was 2.93 seconds in this game. And that's a lot for him. His season average was under 2.7, 2.68 going into the game. And this is the second slowest trigger that he's had in any game this season, 2.93 seconds. And I just don't think he was ever super confident in what he was seeing, right? It wasn't, you see a confident quarterback hit their back foot, the ball's coming out, it's on time, and, and there's space, there's leverage. That never happened for Dak in this passing offense. I think some of that was strong disguised by the Bills defense when they're very good at that spinning late, right? Showing a one picture to the quarterback pre-snap, and then at the snap, the picture changes, right? The Bills did some of that, but I thought they just did a very good job of consistently capping routes, staying leveraged over top, and not giving those receivers much place 
or much room to operate and get separation. I mean, it was a great, great job of cohesive, coordinated coverage. They restricted throwing windows and they competed at the catch point. How many? It was seven, eight pass breakups in this game. Phenomenal job. And then I think from there, the rush scheme complemented the coverage. And a lot of times I'll start these conversations and I'll say it was the D line, the, the, the pass rush, all of that was good. I think this was more about the back seven and then the, the front kind of complemented that. And within that, I thought the Bills, not that there was a ton of like one on one wins, right? But what there was was good coordinated compression style rushes. I think the Bills have really developed their rush package to stylistically compress the pocket around the quarterback and kind of restrict their vision, but also restrict their ability to improvise and create and get outside of structure to make plays. They are forcing you to stay in that pocket. And if you want to move or go anywhere, you got to go backwards. Unless Von Miller flies up the field and gives you the edge, like that'll happen. And it did in this game. But for the most part, that cage rush, that compression style rush to keep that quarterback in the pocket as it as it caves in around them while they can't really, you know, search for throwing windows and get off their get off their spot. It's making it tough on these guys. It made it tough on Patrick Mahomes. It made it really tough on Dak Prescott. I, I think just like we've talked about the last, you know, our last two conversations, the physicality. The physicality on offense showed up also on defense. Guys are getting off blocks. And I think they're able to get off blocks because they they seemed really well prepared. The Bills anticipated so much of what Dallas was going to do. They must have had some very clear tendencies on film that the Bills picked up on because they were ahead of it all the time. I mean, you can even see just like the pursuit to the football and how anticipatory so much of that was in this game. And they're getting ahead of the blocks. You're seeing Dallas's blockers getting out in space, and they're not hitting their, their landmarks because the Bills' pursuit is ahead of it. They were ready for this game. The Bills were. So that physicality, getting off contact, tackling, not conceding yards after contact, how they competed at the catch point in coverage, how they restricted throwing windows. There was a synergy and how the offense and defense played off of each other. A couple of notes here on defense. The Bills ran base defense a couple of times uh, against some heavier personnel sets that Dallas put on the field. I thought it was fascinating that the third linebacker that they brought in, so it's, of course, Terrell Bernard, Tyrell Dotson. The third linebacker was Balen Spector, was not Dorian Williams. It's been Dorian Williams this season. So there's only two snaps of that. Balen Spector was out there. I thought he was he was a disaster on both snaps. Uh, one time he filled the wrong gap, and then the other time he went to fill the gap and just got blasted out of the hole by uh, the the Cowboys fullback. Uh, but it was interesting that Bale Inspector got those chances in this game over Dorian Williams. A couple other players I want to mention. Jordan Poyer thought he was so good in this game, probably his best game of the season, tackling, instinctive, uh, playing downhill, but also they asked him to play some free safety as a post one high guy, and I thought he was very good, uh, staying over top. Um, kind of playing a little bit of cat and mouse game with Dak Prescott at times where I think Dak Prescott is, you know, when it's middle of the field close, when you have a one high post safety, you know, a lot of times that quarterback is waiting for you to kind of pick a side and they want to throw it to the other way. Well, I think, I think Jordan Poyer did a really good job of not committing quicker than he had to. And I think that was part of what kept Dak holding the ball in the pocket and being unsure of what he wanted to do with the football. So Jordan Poyer was phenomenal in this game. Taron Johnson was phenomenal in this game. Coverage, run fits, tackling, exceptional. Tyrell Dotson, excellent in this game. Uh, as a downhill player, uh, had uh, some impact as a rush player as well. He was good in coverage in some of the shallow zone drops that they had him do. He's playing some good football. Uh, Christian Benford, phenomenal in this game. Staying leverage, capping routes, being physical, had an interception, had a chance at another interception. Cam Lewis, I thought, as that, you know, he played the Taylor Rapp role. So in a healthy situation where they have Micah, Pied, Micah Hyde, you know, there's a role for Taylor Rapp. Cam Lewis played the Taylor Rapp role, and I thought he was really good. Uh, impact tackle, impact pass breakup, and he was very sure of himself, playing good, fast, confident football. 
So I, I talk about the back seven. Those are some of the guys in that back seven that I thought were, were really good. And Terrell Bernard as well. Communication component of it. Um, and then he had some good physical hits, and it was fast to flow. He played good ball. Defensive snap counts. The Bills had 57 defensive snaps. Uh, at defensive end, Greg Rousseau, 39 of 57. Shaq Lawson, 30. Leonard Floyd, 30. Von Miller, 24. Kingsley Jonathan, 9. Um, I I was unimpressed with Von Miller. I don't think his his rush plan is very good. I thought his hands were all over the place. He couldn't turn corners, getting too far up the field. I don't know. Some people like to say that there's been progress with Von Miller. I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not going to... F- I'm not going to like give him too much credit for beating the Eagles backup right tackle and the Chiefs backup left tackle like twice in the last two games. I think I think he's still a slug out there. Uh, defensive tackle Ed Oliver, 35 of 57 snaps. Linval Joseph, 24. Tim Settle, 21. Jordan Phillips, 16. Again, the wrist injury for Jordan Phillips. And I thought Jordan Phillips played his best game of the season, particularly as a pass rusher. He had three or four impact rushes in this game. Linebacker Terrell Bernard, 50 of 57 snaps. Tyrell Dotson, 29. Dorian Williams, 7. Tyler Medikavich, 7. Balen Spector, 2. At corner, uh, Christian Benford, 57 of 57 snaps. Rasul Douglas, 50. Teron Johnson, 48. Dane Jackson, 7. Saran Neal, 7. And then safety, uh, Taylor Rapp, 57 of 57. Jordan Poyer, 50. Cam Lewis, 21. Damar Hamlin, 7. Studs and duds. Uh, I got a long list of studs. I'm feeling generous. James Cook, the most obvious stud there ever was. Ty Johnson. Uh, didn't I mean, what do you have? Nine carries for 54 yards. But this dude played tight end, and he was a play side blocker. So he was phenomenal at that, and I thought he ran the ball well. Uh, I give him a lot of credit. Spencer Brown, unbelievable job in the run game. Deion Dawkins, been a stud all year. Connor McGovern, phenomenal game for him. I thought his run blocking was as good as I've seen this year. And and I think for a day where the pass protection was pretty shaky, it wasn't because of Connor McGovern. That guy played good ball. Jordan Poyer, obvious stud. Taron Johnson, Christian Penford, Cam Lewis, Tyrell Dotson, Greg Rousseau, run defense was phenomenal, had uh, half a sack and was close on a couple more. Ed Oliver, super disruptive game. Terrell Bernard, uh, quarterback of the defense. I think he gets a lot of credit for uh, the Bills and I think just being mentally ahead of Dallas in this game. Duds, I don't know. I don't know if I'm I'm feeling super willing to give out duds. Maybe an honorable mention, dud being Dalton Kincaid for two drops. Uh, but I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna quite put him in that in that dud category. Um 31 to 10 win, a dominant win. Some execution issues. Like I mentioned, the passing game concerns me. That's a big win. It's a big win, convincing win, a statement win, and uh, carry it into a road, a short week on the road in, in Los Angeles to play the Chargers this week. So we'll spend a lot of time the rest of the week getting ready for that herd mentality, our next conversation. So don't miss anything. Make sure that you are subscribed. We'd love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow.